Oh, good morning, everyone. We are uh, about to dock in Corfu. It's about 7.15 in the morning. Nice cool morning out. Okay, so uh, that's our first view of Corfu. More when we leave the cabin, and uh, we'll be heading down to breakfast shortly. Basically, these with these white little houses and the blue windows and the blue doors. Uh, well, you'll see that the Corfu is a bit different uh, for many, many reasons. Uh, first of all, our island lying in the western part of Greece uh, is quite green. You'll see that the landscape of the uh, island uh, is quite rich, the vegetation is very rich. Um, unlike some more barren uh, islands in the Cyclades uh, or in the Aegean Sea in general. Here we are in the Ionian Sea and most islands are very green with lots of vegetation. And one reason for this is that Believe it or not, in winter we do get lots of rainfall. Um, so uh, I say, I'm not sure how true that is, that um, we get in winter as much rain as London, believe it or not. Well, maybe not uh, the past winter, which has been uh, quite dry, but in general we do get lots of rainfall. And that's why you'll see uh, how rich the vegetation of our island is. Um, secondly, one reason why this island is quite different from other islands that you may have visited is its history. So historically, Corfu um, has had some uh, really uh, unique uh, features, among which is that it has been under uh, Italian and namely Venetian rule for over four centuries. So uh, while the rest uh, of mainland Greece the Turks, the Ottoman Turks, were ruling the land for over four centuries, more or less. Uh, here, the Turks never set foot, and the Venetians were ruling uh, Corfu and the other Ionian islands. So, uh, you might notice that this island has a, an Italian flair, so to say. And that's not only in the architecture, but also uh, in the culture of the people, uh, in their love for music, uh, even in the way the people speak. So uh, the dialect has many, the local dialect that the Corfids use has many Italian words, and they even have this kind of musical intonation when they uh, speak, kind of like the Italians. So um, our tour today uh, will be uh, driving through the old town of Corfu. So um, we'll make sure that you see as much as possible from the bus. And uh, while in the town, we'll make a short uh, photo stop so that you'll be able to take some pictures. Then um, we will visit a, a distillery and we will taste some of the very traditional uh, local products of Corfu. And um, our last stop will be in the village of Lacones with a great view of the western.
western side of the island, um, in the region, in the right region of the Palelka Streets, which is one of the most famous um, places on the island. So right now, on your right, uh, the mountain that you see belongs actually to Korf. Um It's the highest Jews who uh, were living actually in the old fortress and they were protecting it. There was a barracks for the soldiers inside the old fortress. So we'll make here a short stop for to take some nice pictures of the um, old fortress and the town of Corfu. So I think five or the most ten minutes. That's the old fortress. A lot of yachts. British High Commissioner. Uh, the British sent a High Commissioner here to rule Corfu and the other seven Ionian islands uh, from 1813 to 1864. The British were here for around 50 years and the British actually influenced the island a lot. From here we have a great view uh, on our right of the mountains that belong to nowadays Albania and mainland Greece, a bit further south. So uh, you can tell how close the Ottoman Empire used to be because Albania and mainland Greece used to belong to the Ottoman Empire when the Venetians were here and trying to get hold of the island. Uh, at a point in the north, the distance from Corfu to nowadays Albania is only two kilometers. That's a bit more than one mile, so you can understand how close it was. So now, as we're entering uh, the old town of Corfu, you have a nice view of this old fortress on your right. And soon on your left, you'll see a square that is actually the biggest square in the whole Balkan area. We call it Spianava, it's an esplanade, uh, in, uh, you would call it um, in Italian, from the Italian language. Um, and actually, you can see the square now on your left. Um, the reason why we have this huge square that we now enjoy, uh, because it's full of trees and people can come here to um, spend some time and get some shade, uh, especially in the summer, uh, in the afternoon or in the evening. Uh, the reason this, we have this big square is because the Venetians wanted it to be empty so that they were, could better defend themselves against the enemy. So when they would come and try to get hold of the old fortress, they wouldn't have any place to hide the enemy. So that's why they had this empty uh, space on our left now. So you see, we have a great view now of the old fortress with these bastions protruding into sea to make sure that the old fortress would be safe. You see the cross up there, one can um, walk all the way up to the cross and have a great view of the town of Corfu. On your left, you also see a green space that is actually a cricket pitch. Believe it or not, we have a cricket pitch right in the center of the old town. That's, of course, a British influence. The British taught the Corfuids to play cricket, and many Corfuids love it and play it often. Soon, on your right, you will see uh, a building that we locals call the palace. It's the palace of St. George and St. Michael and it was built by the British as the residence of the High Commissioner and the seat of the Ionian Senate. And nowadays, uh, here we have, it's, it is housed the Museum of um, um, Asian Culture and Art. It's a neoclassical building with many Greek and Roman elements. Uh, we'll drive right now under one of the two gates, uh, the gate of St. George. You will admire the Doric columns of this palace built by
by the British in the 19th century. And now we're driving through some of the uh, buildings of the old town of Corfu. On your right now, you see a ferry boat coming from mainland Greece. We have a daily connection many times a day, actually, every two hours or so, by ferry boat from the island to mainland Greece. And you see a small island on your right now, which is called Vivo. Uh, it used to belong to a Venetian nobleman named Guido, and that's why we name it, call it Vivo nowadays. And it's a virgin place, actually. No cars are there. It can be visited by boat. There is a nice um, beach on the back side of it. And it's a lovely place for a daily excursion, actually, from the town of Corfu. And on your left, you see some um, old houses with a great view to the sea and the mountains on the other side of Middle Greece. The poet of our national anthem used to live on one of these houses, right on your left, the one on the past now on your left, used to live here and enjoy this view and get inspiration for his poems. And now, on your right soon, you will see the so-called New Fortress. Well, we call it new just compared to the old one, because it was actually built in the end of the 16th century, so not so much later on the old fortress, and it um, completed this fortification of the old town, uh, which made the town safe, and the Venetians and the locals were able to defend themselves against the Turks. The area on your right used to be the port, the old Venetian port. So ven the Venetians were traders, they were merchants. They would bring goods from the east, from the orient, uh, through Corfu and other stations, other port, the ports that they uh, ruled, and they would bring all these goods to Western Europe and sell them and get rich. So you can imagine this place bustling with life uh, while the Venetians were ruling this place, selling uh, goods from all over the Mediterranean and further east. We are at the Comquat factory. back home. 
love story for all the wars, the Greek heroes of the war. Odysseus took his soldiers and his fleet, trying to get back home to Ithaca, his island. Ithaca is actually one of the seven Ionian islands, a bit further south of Corfu. But his uh, journey wasn't easy. Um, he went through many, many adventures and it took him actually 10 years to get back home to Ithaca. And that's because Poseidon, the god of the sea, was really angry at him because during one of his adventures he arrived at this place uh, that was ruled by the giants with one eye. And one of those giants was the son of Poseidon. And Ulysses, Odysseus, in order to um, be able to get away from this island and from this, these giants, he had to blind the giant's eye, the only eye that he had, and so Poseidon was so angry at him that he wouldn't let him get back home to Ithaca. So he spent around seven years on an island which we nowadays assume was Malta. Malta is in the south of Sicily, the south of, the south of Italy, uh, at the island of Calypso, this uh, goddess who was holding him and she was in love with him and wouldn't let him go. But at some point, the gods decided to let Ulysses get back home to Ithaca. So he built his own ship. It was a small one, not a very big vessel, to uh, sail from probably nowadays Malta all the way to Ithaca. And at the beginning, his journey was easy, and uh, the sea was calm. But at some point, Poseidon realized that the other gods had um, agreed to let Odysseus go back home. He got really angry, and uh, so he um, made the seas very rough. He was the god of the sea. Uh, he caused many high waves, and Odysseus was in a really uh, bad situation. He uh, his ship was destroyed and shipwrecked and naked. Instead of arriving to Ithaca, he arrived here on Corfu, on our island. Uh, Homer names our island the land of the Phaeacians. The Phaeacians were actually descendants of God Poseidon, um, of him and Kerkira, these, this fairy that gave the name to the island. Um, and so this was the land of the Phaeacians and the palace of the king Alkinos, who was king when Odysseus arrived here, is supposed to be at this area where we're going to right now. Well, we just fine. the small square, the central place of the village, with a traditional coffee shop on your right. Here, our drivers have the chance to show how skilled and experienced they are. <laughs> Imagine that a 50-seated bus like this one can pass. 
pass through these alleys, but you can. <coughs> I think our driver deserves some applause now. <laughs> <laughs> Great job, Speedos. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, so this is Enjoying the view? It's beautiful. Amazing. So breezy up here too. And, and we've got the whole restaurant to ourselves. It's nice. else We're sitting all down over there there's Helen and Misha
Maybe <laughs> on your left, climbed up to the rocks. You see there are many um, shops here with a great view, offering drinks or snacks or even some of them are restaurants for guests. Now we're going to drive through the countryside of Corfu to get back to the port. Another small monastery is on our left. Here, this is a, a nunnery actually. It's a monastery of uh, women for women. On your left, Saint Paraskevi. It's a Greek, it's a Saint from the Greek Orthodox Church. Actually, 95% um, of the Greeks are Greek Orthodox, which is a Christian dogma, quite similar to the Catholic dogma, actually, with minor differences. And on the island, apart from the Orthodox, we also have a few uh, Catholics, mainly of Maltese origin. And that's why we also have a Catholic cathedral uh, right in the center of the old town of Corfu. You see the nets on your uh, right, these black nets that are used to um, gather the olives and make olive oil. And you can understand uh, how big the uh, coffee of olive grove is now that we're driving through it. during the Byzantine period. Uh, as you can tell from yourselves, it had a great view of the sea and they could see any time an enemy would um, approach the island and um, threaten it. Uh, and so uh, with this view, they could warn the people of the wider region here to go into the castle. Okay, so we uh, got off our tour and we took a uh, shuttle bus to uh, the old town and this is the park that we had passed earlier in the old town. And we are now going to walk through the old town and to do some shopping, window shopping or whatever. So here we go and uh, I'll bring you back as we uh, find something interesting. We'll probably 
stop for a little something since we decided not to go back onto the ship and decided to uh, venture around and see a little bit of Corfu. There seem to be some nice places out here. So we're going to do some exploring and then we'll figure out what else we're going to do. More later. Okay, so we just went into this uh, place. We're gonna get a, a uh, sublaki uh, being made right now. Didn't take long. But, uh, here we are We're on this uh, little street here. Well, have a bite. Okay, while we eat this, uh, we're going to take a break from a uh, video, and then we'll be back. So we're walking along here, all kinds of stores and shops, and uh, looks like we're coming up to some main square here because all the buses are here. We're going to look at the map and take a different route. And make our way uh, back towards the water. Busy, busy, busy here today. All right, I'll bring you back in a minute. We're going to see where we are. I don't know what that is. Right. Wanna walk down this way? Okay, we're going where we don't know where we're going. Where we're going. Where we're going. It said the Dorel spot.
Okay, so we just found this little cafe and outside area here. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a little something. And I think I'm gonna have this coffee with ice cream. And then we'll walk around a little more and then make our way back to the boat. Another little view of where we are. Hey everyone. Yeah, we're on the move again. Had a nice, lovely stop. Now we're. Uh, we don't know where. We don't know where we are. Sort of like lost a little bit, but um, I think we're gonna walk up this way. So I think this is a nice little alleyway. We're experimenting through the streets here. Not really lost, because uh, know the direction we need to go. And as you can now see, we are back in uh, Main Street area. <laughs> Let me take a glance and see what's down this way. But no, I wouldn't let you do it. Oh. You go in and get feet, get your feet clean. It is. I always want to do this. She won't let me do it. Why? Well, she's giggling, so I'm sure it's going to be ticklish. <laughs> There's so much junk on my feet to eat, too. The fish will get big. <laughs> Look at huge. <laughs> it's fun walking through these streets. <clears throat> Don't really know where we're going and just exploring. Nice dress shops. Bookstore, sort of. So, Corfu is known for kumquats and olive, and uh, it's the mainstay of what they sell. Okay, this stuff all looks good. What do they have in here? Hurts good. Oh, looks like a little 7 Eleven market. That's what this shit is, there. Okay, uh, we're going to take a break for a second here so I can get my bearings and then we'll be back. Okay, so yeah, we were heading in the right direction. And we're walking back. Whoa, tobacco shop, cigarettes, cigars. Mm. Wow. 
Wow, they have DuPont lighters here. Might have to go in and see what they got. Well, no Cuban cigars there, so off we go. Well, a Hannah store. We're just walking around a little bit more, waiting on the uh, bus schedule, and instead of standing in one spot, I decided just to cruise around a little bit. Nope. Here's another unoccupied street. Nice dresses. Put it that one. <laughs> Let's get that for Rachel. The blue one? Either one. Everybody!